this week on Canadian Whitetail. Well, not even uh, 10 minutes into the walk here and uh, found exactly what I didn't want to be finding, but uh, I knew that uh, there was definitely going to be a bit of this from last winter. After a devastating 2012-13 winter, deer populations in Saskatchewan plunge, as much as 80% in some areas. And the only encounter Josh has in 2014 with a mature deer ends in heartbreak as he turns to walk away. But now in 2015, Josh has a new target, and it's a deer that he knows well. <sighs> Did it look good? Smoke the body. Oh, perfect. Deer hunting is a lot like life. It's not easy. And if you want results, it's a lot of work. And like life, there's no shortcuts, no workaround or easy way to your goals. And if your goal is to hunt the biggest free-range whitetails that have ever walked, it's 365 days a year of preparation and dedication. For us, that's all fueled by a passion for whitetails, and to share these hunts and the stories of these deer on film. As do-it-yourself hunters, success means a never-ending cycle of getting ready, scouting, and setting up, until all of that work is not work anymore and it simply becomes your lifestyle and what you do. And you do it so that when the season is finally here and it's time to head in and hunt, you have a chance. A chance for that one moment, that one second that we all dream about. A chance to experience that feeling that when all your hard work pays off, and that giant steps out. Gorgeous animal, unbelievable, incredible deer. Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Limb Saver, products that work. Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Excalibur Crossbow. The most trusted crossbows on the planet. Under Armour. Never detected. Always lethal. Elite Archery. The world's most shootable bow. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. Performance and value by design. Bog Pod. Monopods, Bipods and Tripods. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Premium food plot seed specifically engineered for whitetail deer. And by the Heater Body Suit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. Targeting specific bucks, mature bucks, usually comes at a cost. Not a dollar value, rather an investment in time and effort. And disappointment often going home empty handed. And that's a feeling that Josh knows all too well from the past couple of seasons. It's the uh, middle of April, still got tons of snow. We've had snow for more than six months already. Should be out walking the deer trails looking for sheds and stuff, but not gonna happen for a couple, three weeks yet. Deer have had a rough go. I've been feeding around 20 in my yard all winter with some round bales. Kept these ones good and healthy, it looks like. So uh, another couple of weeks, probably, hopefully by May here, we'll. Uh, get out and put some miles on the boots and look for some horns and hopefully we're just finding sheds and not skulls. As winter fades, the hardest winter in 80 years in Saskatchewan, hoping to not find more deer skulls and sheds is an unlikely scenario. Well, not even uh, 10 minutes into the walk here and uh, <clears throat> found exactly what I didn't want to be finding, but uh, I knew that uh, 
there's definitely going to be a bit of this from last winter. Saskatchewan being snow covered from October 2012 until nearly June 2013, nearly eight months of record low temperatures and record high snowfall proved to push the limits, and even the hardy northern deer were just unable to endure as reports flooded in province-wide of massive die-offs. Dead deer number two. Go see if it's a buck or a doe. Not good. This one it is a buck. Twenty-five minutes into the walk and uh, dead deer number three. All winter we knew it was happening. We could see it, but getting out in the spring to witness firsthand the destruction that Mother Nature had left behind. Well, for those of us that love deer, it was a heartbreaking time to say the least. I'd say that was a yearling buck. Uh, that's just a small little bush here too, maybe a 25, 30 acre bush. That's three already and I'm not even, not even halfway through it. This segment has been brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. A Central Boiler easily connects to your existing forced air, in-floor radiant, baseboard, or dual heat system to heat your entire home in domestic water. Central Boiler, performance and value by design. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. With record low deer numbers and not having an encounter with a mature buck in 2013, Josh looks forward to hopefully a better 2014. Fairly cold out this morning. Minus 25, minus 34 or something with the wind, so I'm thinking the deer will be up moving. A season of low deer sightings has Josh down. However, after the recent hard winters, fawns were a rarity and a welcome sight. But Josh was about to see something even more rare since the die-off, a big mature buck coming from the back. As the buck approaches, Josh is given but a split second to shoot. And in that split second, as the deer turns to leave, Josh makes the decision not to shoot rather to let the deer walk, knowing that his area would be better served right now with the gorgeous buck on his feet rather than in a freezer. Again, in 2014, a lot of hard decisions are made and a lot of deer are let walk to mature, hoping that it'll pay off for Josh in the future. Whitetail Insights, brought to you by the QDMA, the Quality Deer Management Association, ensuring the future of whitetail deer. I think one thing that I'd like to talk about is, you know, really who owns those deer and, and you know, the resource that those deer are in any given area, because I know, you know, everybody has their own management techniques and kind of follows their own, their own road, but those deer always dump the fence onto the neighbor's place and the, that neighbor might carry a little bit of a different management technique than you do. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and you don't own the deer and I don't own the deer. I mean, the deer belong to everybody. Right. And, uh, and I think that's one of the things that can be frustrating at times for people, but it also is a really good opportunity for folks to work together, you know, neighbors and, and landowners uh, to develop a, you know, QDM cooperatives and things and work together to, to the benefit of everybody. We, we've talked to you know, people hunting across the fence many times about specific deer that you know both parties might be hunting and came to agreements that we're going to let this deer walk this year and next year he's you know he's free game if you get him great for you guys if we get him great for us and, and we always notice that it seems to the the what side of the fence that deer's on seems to bring up a bit of a controversy sometimes and and it's so easily avoided by you know being happy for that hunter across the fence you know we watch a lot of deer grow and mature and that's just what we're into you know, we'll have a, you know, a three-year-old deer that looks like he's going to be a superstar and he'll get shot on a neighboring property. And when that hunter's happy, and you know, we're the first guys to go over there with the sheds off that deer or just, you know, shake his hand and give him a high five because, you know, his experience is not our experience. And we're all, you know, in the woods for the same reason is to get that experience that we enjoy. That's right. And, and we're all hunters at the end of the day. You know, we're, we're brothers uh, with that. And, you know, that's one of the things that's so nice about, you know, shows your integrity to be the first to congratulate 
that guy or that gal for that. And uh, you know, they had a good experience with it. You know, and thank God the deer didn't get hit by a truck, yeah. you know, or die to a cow. You know, somebody got to celebrate putting their seal on it, their tag on it, and be that excited. So, so that's a good thing. Yep. We should celebrate that. It's a good chance to meet that hunter and to you know start talking about you know things you can do when you hunt on neighboring properties. It's like it's just like living next to somebody in in a, in a city. You know, you, you're together, so you can make the best of it or you can make the worst of it. And it's a lot better results if you make the best of it. And there's a lot of opportunity there to take you know, a lot of your QDMA management practices into effect. And, you know, if you're hunting a 80 acre piece of woods and he's got, you're hunting a 100 acre piece of woods, now together you guys have a 180 acre piece of wood. That's right. And I think it's important to remember that not everybody, you know, can hunt the same number of days each right. year. Not everybody has the same background experiences. And that's one of the beautiful things about QDM is that it allows everybody to participate and have a great time while at the same time improving things for deer. And that's, that's what I was just gonna say, it all comes back to is, Every aspect you look at it, you know, working together with a neighbor, regardless of, you know, what happens or which aspect of the you look at, in the end, it's a net benefit for the deer, which is going to benefit those hunters any way you look at it. That's right. This Whitetail Insight is brought to you by the Quality Deer Management Association. Become a member and ensure the future of whitetail deer. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. Now 2015, Josh was headed out to scout, looking for a buck that he had known since looking at a new area back in 2013, a deer he let mature again in 2014, and was hoping would still be in the area. With the 2015 season quickly approaching, Josh finally had a mature target buck, and it was a buck that he knew well and had nicknamed Curly. Josh didn't find Curly until 2013 where he felt that he was just a four-year-old deer. In 2014 he definitely grew, but now in 2015 he was very impressive. A big unique frame deer with great mass and tall tines, Curly was to be Josh's 2015 target. And the buck that he called Curly was proving to be very visible at the big and J that Josh had put out. With his target buck making regular appearances on his trail camera, Josh takes everything he's learned in the last couple of years on the buck that he calls Curly and heads in to get set up. Josh and Ryan get in and get their blind set up, and the shooting lane's clear of any small branches that might be in the way, with very little time to spare. With just days before the start of the season, now set up and ready, Josh gets some final days practice in with his elite as the season opener approaches. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Well, we're just in here checking on our Alpha Rack plot and this week's scouting segment is gonna be a little bit about having realistic expectations for that first year that you build a food plot and how that plot's gonna evolve over its lifespan. There's no quick fix to a trophy mature whitetail and that's a given and we've talked about it many many times. Food plots are an incredible way to improve the habitat in the area you hunt and improve your hunting in that area as well. The first year you build a food plot it's like anything else, it's brand new to those deer. It's going to increase the deer's traffic out to that area, absolutely. But those deer are going to be hesitant to pattern to that food source immediately. So the first year the deer love those food plots, they're very effective and you're going to see a lot of deer. Patterning those deer is going to be a little bit more difficult depending on when you got that food plot in and when those deer started settling into it. Year two, that patterning is going to increase as it is in year three and then you're going to hit the sweet spot years which is year four, five and beyond. The more effort and dedication and the longer term that you plan on maintaining that food plot, every year is just going to increase its effectiveness and increase your hunting opportunities at that plot and on that property. It's like anything, it takes work, but the nice thing with these plots is the first year you definitely get results. And the second year, those results grow, and they grow the third, the fourth, and the fifth year as you go on. Because the deer start to adapt and realize that that's a stable food source, it's a food source that's there, and they become easier to pattern and to hunt on that property. And that's your scouting segment for this week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants.
Well, it's the opener of uh, archery season 2015. Just heading into uh, sit for Curly. Fairly cloudy. It's supposed to start raining here towards dark. Uh, we want to get in early. We're thinking the deer are going to move early, but we'll see. A little bit windy, but I think if it'll calm off towards dark, that uh, the deer will be moving for sure. Excited that after a couple of dismal years, he finally has a target buck to focus on and an opening day. Josh heads out to get in for the season's start. Well, we just got set up in the blind here first evening for Curly. It's a season opener. It's a cloudy, cloudy, windy day. It's supposed to start raining towards dark. So we're thinking the deer are going to move early. We came in early. So we'll see what happens here. Unfortunately, early deer movement wasn't in the cards, but a couple of hours into the evening, the deer began to make their way by. As the evening fades, Josh is near ready to close off day one when he catches movement in the back and is about to receive a token of karma for all of Josh's discipline in the previous seasons. Just the last minutes of camera light on opening day, Josh's target buck Curly is under 20 yards, and Josh is about to get his shot, drawing his bow for the first time in three years. After blood trailing Curly for 60 yards with near dead flashlights, Josh and Ryan elect to back out and return in the morning to pick up the trail. Big white valley right there. He didn't go another 30 yards from where we left him last night. Buck we call Curly. Nice five by five with kind of crab claw fronts, real curled beams. He was working scrapes just a little half mile over here last fall heavy and this year I got on him early in the summer and stuck with him. Got the blind set up a couple weeks ago and came in just at uh, five after seven like he usually does and was 
able to make a shot on him. I mentioned at the beginning of the show that targeting specific bucks and hunting just mature deer definitely comes at a cost. But like many aspects of life, those things that come at the greatest cost also bring the greatest rewards. And there's no other feeling quite like finally connecting on a target buck. And congratulations, Josh, on a fantastic deer. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. Closed captioning for Canadian Whitetail is provided by HuntSask.ca, your information source for Canada's best whitetail hunting. Hunt Saskatchewan, Canada. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Ramcat Broadheads, Hits Like a Ram, Cuts Like a Cat, Cool a Buck, Portable Walk-In Cooler Systems, Scott Archery, CBE Bow Sights, and Black Eagle Arrows. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors.